Hello everyone! Modding, or more recently called user-generated content, is awesome. And if a player makes something they really want to share, storing everything in a regular image that can just be thrown around makes it even better. Here are some examples. In Spore you can create your own creatures and share them around with just a picture of them. All the information to get this creature up and running again in another player's game is hidden within these pixels. The same is true for this roller coaster from Parkitect over here. When another player imports this image into their game, people instantly start queuing because everything this roller coaster needs to run is hidden within the image. Pico 8 goes even a step further by hiding an entire video game in a single image. All the sprites, all the sounds, and all the code, it's all in there. It's useful, good looking, and just plain fun, if you ask me. Maybe in your game you want to share characters around. Or if you have a card game, you can share card lists or deck lists around. If you have a level editor, maybe sharing stages is a possibility. Everything is possible, it's all up to you. But where is all this information? Well, we can't quite see it. But if we start zooming in, what appears to be grey, for example, is actually slight color variations of grey. It's a little bit of noise, you can see. It's within this noise that all the extra information is stored. In the Architect example, you can see the same thing, but a little bit less so, because they store less information per pixel. So this is just regular blue, and at some point you can see a little bit of color variation, a little bit darker, a little bit lighter, and that's where actually all the information is. So if you zoom out, like most people do that would use this image, you can't see it, but the computer, of course, can. So, for simplicity's sake, I'm going to simplify the next part a little bit. If you don't know a lot about bits and bytes, don't worry. Basically, how it works is every pixel consists of four numbers. One for red, one for green, and one for blue. And one for transparency, or alpha. Each of these numbers are from 0 to 255. So, uh, it's like you can mix them. So for example, here in Photoshop, if I sample a color, for example from Parkitect, we can see that this is the color 66, 92, and 145. Alpha is full, so that's just 255. Um, if, for example, we make this beautiful color 255, 255, 0, then we get this beautiful color. Now, let's just paint a little bit of it. All right, each of these numbers, or each of these bytes, are separated into eight bits. And that looks like this. So one, 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 because we put 255. The green one was zero, 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 because we put zero for green. And blue is the same thing as red. Alpha as well. So behind the scenes, this color consists of these four bytes, written out in bits. The last two bits are actually way less important than the first two bits. Imagine if this is your bank account and you have a thousand euros, um, well, let's say a thousand and one, and you have to pay taxes. And the tax collector says, you have to give me the last digit. Well, that's fine. Now you only lost one euro. But if you have to give the first digit, now you lost a thousand. So we much rather clear this away than these away. So we have less of a color variation, let's say. So imagine we clear all these bits. These as well, these from zero, well, they get to zero again. All these, we clear them. We don't use them for color. How would this color look? Well. It would look something like this. So the color on the left here is where we use all the bits for color. And the color on the right, we only use everything but the last two bits. They are near identical. But with those last two bits, we can put anything we want in there. So, for example, if we want to store uh, a number, uh, well, the number, let's say, 2, 
0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. So we can put those two zeros, for example, in here, those two in here, those two in here, and those two in here. And now we have almost the same color, but these four, well, these eight bits we use to put any number we want. I put two, you can put 42, you can put whatever you want. So and standard understanding this concept and programming this, however, is a whole different cup of tea. So I created an asset to make it easy for you to put this in your own games. Let me show you. This is the example scene I built for this asset, just to visualize everything that's going on. In the link below, there is a WebGL build of it, so you can mess around with it at your own pace. Let's see it in action. First and foremost, we need to load a texture, something representative for the data we're going to store. I'm going to choose my old Guild Wars character. Of course, this doesn't have to come from disk, it can come from a render texture or anywhere you like. On the left side, we can start adding data. I'm going to start by adding the number 20, which is the level of this character. And I'm going to write it as a byte. You can write it as many different data types. I will go through all of them in the deep dive video, but a byte will do the trick for now. Let's add it. Here you can see all the data that's going to be added to the texture. And if we go to binary, you can take a deeper look in where it's going to end up. The first two bits will end up in the red channel, then two in the green, two in the blue, and two in the alpha channel. Now, if we zoom in a tremendous amount into this top left corner, you can and look at these top pixels here. When I click right, they will change the slightest bit. So this is exactly as I explained before. The last two bits of every channel are deleted and the number 20 is inserted. If you zoom out again, no way anybody will spot this, but the computer can and that's the important part. Now if you read again, you will see two numbers. The first one, ignore that one for now, it's the length, I will go through it in depth uh, in the deep dive video, but here is a number 20 exactly as expected. If we go to binary and then to raw data, we can see all the pixels it is actually read. The first one and this is the second one. As we can see in the last two bits of the red channel are these two zeros, then in the last two bits of the green channel 0 1, 0 1 and 0 0. Now we can also for example add the name of this character. Let's add a string and then the name of this character. I named my character back in the day Sekhmet. Let's add this. It will of course be change into a number because characters are numbers and well that's actually quite useful um, and if we write that once again let's zoom in again and write well you can you can barely see it i don't even think it will the video will uh will see it but if we read again more data will be added and if we read now now here's the level uh, 20 and then we read a string behind that, and then we read segment. So all these numbers here, not the seven, that's the length. I will go through it once again in the deep dive video, but this is the S, E, C, H, M, E, and the D. And that's it. So now you can save this texture, for example, as Gilbert's character, hidden data, and send it off to your friend or, you know, and they can load it into their game and then have the actual level and the name of this character embedded within this texture. There are many different options you can, you know, tinker with. Um, I will go through all of them in the deep dive video. You can see many of them already up here. And that's it. I hope you found this video informative and hopefully you are as excited as me to use this hidden data technique in your games as I am. The link to the asset is in the description if you would like to purchase it and if you have any more questions you can leave a comment or post in the topic I have on the Unity forums. I hope I will see you there and have a nice day.